Hello and welcome to Linoleum Knife. It's our very first episode. <laughs> it's going to be the one that we look back at later, totally embarrassed at how Hello crappy it sounds. and welcome to Linoleum Knife. My name's he Alon- said. My name's Alonzo Duralde from MovieLine.com. We should introduce each other because that would make it better. Yes, because With, okay, fine. Across, we also need to explain the name. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to there's that. a lot of things. Oh God, you can tell we really prepped for this. Before I now. did. I'm full of preparation. Yeah, your ideas are already terrible. Um, across the table for me is Dave White, film critic for Movies.com. Howdy. And are you going to introduce me now? Or? Oh, is that all I get? I'm just with movies.com. Oh, I, I have so many other accomplishments. <laughs> we can get to that later. All right. I just, um, and the other guy that awkwardly inter- said hello to you first is Alonzo Duralde, who is a very uh, important movie writer guy. He is the author of 101 Must See Movies for Gay Men. Okay, we're not going to do the my author whole of, bio. Hang right on. I'm, fix- I'm doing your whole bio <sighs> right now. He is the author of Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas. Which in stores is out, now. In stores now. Brand new. He's the DVD columnist for MovieLine.com. He is some kind of boss dude with the LA Film Critics Association. <laughs> and what else do you do? And, and you, I'm, a, I'm an editor you, for Crusader.com. But that has nothing to do with movies. Well, okay, no. We're talking about our movie things. Uh, I occasionally do pieces for um, movies.com and msnbc.com. That's and right. Hitfix.com. So many and things. Yeah. And uh, Dave White, since we're doing this now. Oh, but no, no, no. But that's why I, I was about to say, I mean, my many other. Uh, is the author of Exile and Guyville. That's Bill. right. But um, that's, that's really it as far as. I and, mean, Exile and Guyville isn't about movies, and they only really movie writing gig. Well, no, no, no. MSNBC. MSNBC. Yeah, that's right. I do that yeah, too. Yeah. And is a contributor uh, to the uh, Los Angeles literary magazine Slake. That's and, right. So, all right. So now that everyone is bored to death, they're not bored to death. <laughs> they're, they're impressed with us now. <laughs> And we've established our credentials for why we're tell them why this is called this. linoleum. Knife. This is called linoleum knife because, um, well, because no, you shut up was taken for one thing. Yeah, um, we were going to call it no, you shut up, but then it somebody was else somebody else that title. has that title. Um, and so, uh, if you saw uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon f- movie film for theaters, and remember the um, the little intro, uh, uh, let's all go to the lobby cartoon, um, the the angry punk rock movie snacks threatened people in the movie theater that if you talk, they will cut off your lips with a linoleum knife. A linoleum knife. So this is Linoleum Knife, the podcast. If you talk back to us, we will cut off your <laughs> lips with a linoleum knife. Although actually we do welcome listener but feedback. Not, but, but not, we will not cut off the lips of the friend who is sitting here at the table with us. <laughs> will, who is making a horrified face. Who will be, he's going to be mostly quiet yes. unless he has some questions. But anyway, so um, so this is a, 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 a weekly, ideally, show where we talk about movies. And so um, this week... Not super long, though. No. We're not going to make you sit around forever listening no, to no, us. No, not one of those. So this week, uh, we have uh, two new movies that we're talking about. Um, Danny Boyle's 127 Hours. Which is fantastic. And uh, Tyler Perry's For Colored Girls. Which is this other movie. Yes. <laughs> so let's start with 127 Hours. Do you want to give them a wrap-up about what it's about? Uh, James Franco is this uh, real chill bro. Who he's a real person. A, he's also a real person named Aaron Ralston, and he's this guy who's he's one of those guys that you meet who goes to fish concerts and likes to <laughs> hike in the desert, man, and get into canyons and things, and and you know climb around. If he's one of those guys that knows all the different kinds of rope. <laughs> and and the kinds of metal thingies that you put into rocks to hold the ropes so that you can climb up them and then down them and into like lagoons that are down underneath the caves <laughs> where you can like frolic about okay, with other nubile could, could hiking you maybe chicks. Get to the plot of the film. I'm setting it up for oh, them. Okay. He falls down into this crack in the earth of the desert in Utah, and then he gets his arm crushed and stuck under a rock. And then the whole rest of the movie, he stands in one place with his arm stuck in a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rock. But then, okay, we can tell everything yeah, that happens okay, in this yeah. movie because I've already been. It's a true story. I've already, it's a true story. The guy already wrote a book about it. He went all over the place promoting the book, and he's all, he's out promoting this movie too. And if you look at the dude, you will notice there's something very unique about him, and that is that he only has one single arm. 
And the reason he only has one single arm is because of to, what happens in this movie. To get out of the canyon, he has to cut it off. Uh, which I thought everybody knew, but apparently after Dave wrote his review for Movies.com, um, people somebody, were not unhappy. People were not like, happy with me. Spoiler man. Yeah, but but it's not a spoiler. You can't spoil reality. Yeah, it's it's like news. You know, Sorry. you cannot spoil reality. That would be like, oh, I just watched this movie about Abraham Lincoln. Don't tell me what happened. <laughs> my my favorite story about Aaron Ralston in real life was. Um, you know, every year on America's Next Top Model, they always make the girls do the big crazy makeovers. And one year, there was this girl with, like, really long hair, like, down to her ass. And they made her cut it super, like, you know, Mia Farrow short. <laughs> and she cried and cried and cried and cried, just made a, carried on, made a big deal about it. So then after she got dumped from the show... The next week, she does the talk show circuit, and she goes on Ellen, and they show the clip where they cut her hair, and she's like, cry, 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 cry. The guest they bring on after her... Was him. Aaron Ralston. Nice. <laughs> it's nice. like, yeah, it kind of puts that hair thing into perspective. I had to cut my arm off to get out of a crevasse, you know. A crevasse? Is, is that what you call crevice. it? It's a deep, uh, a crevice. A crevice? A crevasse? A crevasse is a word, I think. Crevasse? Yeah. That's how you say it? I, well, there's crevice, but there's also... Is it not the same thing? I don't think so. Is a crevice and a crevasse. Will, what is this difference between a crevice I think a crevasse and is a deeper, crevasse? Right? A crevasse is deeper and wider. It's like a trench. This was not, well, was this place kind of wide? This was sort of a wide-ish place. It's a, it's a, cre it's right, a, it's a crevice it's a, kind of crevasse. He was crevasse, in a, was in a crevice crevasse. <laughs> so, um, so this movie, so you like it a lot. It's fantastic, as I said at the beginning of the movie, and at the beginning of the, the, the this, what we're doing. Um <laughs> Because if you think, you know, you're going to have a movie where the camera's just fixed on a guy stuck in one spot, that is not what you were going to have. You were going to have a Danny Boyle movie. And Danny Boyle loves to visually sort of extrapolate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he does so in a way that I have always found pretty ecstatic to, you know, sure. I, 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 I really love his filmmaking style. It is... It is maybe kind of showy and pop for a lot of people, and maybe they don't dig that, and so those people should not go see Danny Boyle <laughs> films. Um, but I'm a big fan, and I also found this incredibly moving, especially the end. Which, well, uh, this is the part I'm not going to spoil. It's very moving. It's not just this movie like, oh, God, we're waiting for this guy to cut off his knife. Cut off his knife. We're waiting for this guy to cut off his arm. It's not that. It's about something more, and it's about how – he, you know, realizes all the things that he has to go back to, all the things that he needs to live for. And so I got a little choked up at the end because it's that it's that moving. I have to say, I, I mean, I like the film a lot. I think it's, you know, yeah, Boyle is a you know great visual stylist. Franco's performance is terrific. There's a there's a it is a it's a much more exuberant movie than you would think about just that. It's just about a guy who cuts his arm off. Um, but for me, it just felt so kind of specifically about that event, you know? I mean, like, yes, they give you the larger perspective of his life and the meaning of, you know, what... what well, this is a metaphor. Even of, the tone you're using right now is dismissive. I, I'm going, not. His life and the... Man, man, man. Oh, this anyway, is why you're wrong. I just... To me, it just, it just felt... It felt so focused um, that it, I, I kind of just sort of felt like I was watching this really elaborate and interestingly made kind of reenaction, you know, like on a crime show, um, like with a budget and a really good cast and a great crew. But ultimately that was it. Like, there was, like I, God, I didn't know I was pregnant for instance. Yes. But like, I would, I don't know. There was, there was, there was an, oh, sorry, it's my fucking phone. There was an element, uh, to it that was not that just, I don't know. I, when I, I felt like Were I you not I, paying attention. Yes, I was paying attention. <laughs> I just, I had to just, when it was over, I kind of felt like, well, that was good and it was well done for what it is, but it just, it, I, I don't know, I was a little underwhelmed. I it was, was transporting. All right, well, then, then we disagree. But I'm right. <laughs> yeah, so you, you tell yourself that. Uh, our other film this week. Are we done already talking about 127 uh, hours? Do, do, do you have more to say? Are there new ways that I can tell you you're wrong? Besides that, because that's going to get boring fast. <laughs> yeah. You just didn't like it enough. You liked it some, but you didn't yeah, like no, it no, enough. No, no, no. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I, I didn't adore it, but I think there's a lot to like about it. You need to adore it. Well, I'm sorry. I do not. <laughs> you're going to adore it, Will. Will's going to adore leave it. Leave him out of this. <laughs> Once Will sees it, it's going to be us against you. Fine. 
Look, Matt Singer has my back. The IFC podcast this week is all about. Well, guess what? The I've never met of, Matt Singer. Well, he's a good guy. You should know him. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, anyway, they did a, they did a podcast this week about the films of Danny Boyle. Although Matt did not see Millions, which uh, he really should. Because did they talk about Sunshine? Sunshine they, is they, so awesome. They did talk about Sunshine. I was kind of tuning it out because I still haven't seen it, and I didn't mm-hmm. want spoilers. You've because, seen Sunshine. I, he's talking to Will. I want to see it on the big screen. Like that's one you told me, like not to watch it on. Video. You should see it on a big screen. Yeah, so I'm not it's like going to a rave in outer space. Exactly. So I'm waiting for that opportunity. <laughs> so at some point in LA, I will have the chance to see Sunshine on a big screen, and I'll watch it. Uh, I didn't see that, and I didn't see The Beach. But I think I've. Oh, and I didn't see A Life Less Ordinary. But I've I seen didn't all the see. Other I didn't see The Beach because I heard it was. Poop, uh, yeah, I heard it was not that great. Beach, did, did, did you see Life Less Ordinary? Is what that, one was that? that the, the 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 one with. Uh, Cameron Diaz and oh Cameron yeah, that Rayer. was dumb. But I mean, you know what? Funny, it was fun anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, it's the people. It's a comedy. People are yelling at each other. But you know, I like I liked Shallow Grave a lot, and you know, Train Spotting obviously, and Millions is in my Christmas Millions movie is book in and... Alonso Duralde's new book, One Hundred and One. <laughs> nope, no wait, no, no wait, sorry. <laughs> uh, have yourself no, no. <laughs> have yourself a movie little Christmas. Yes, Millions is in Alonso Duralde's new book. Have yourself a movie little Christmas. <laughs> Can go to Amazon and buy that right now. <laughs> you can you can you can like my book at Facebook. That means I'll get a pony for Christmas. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just I I, I mean yeah, I, I liked 127 hours. I think it, it does what it does well. I just I just kind of left wanting more from it. I guess more arm cutting off bits. No, no, no. There was just enough that part of that. was fantastic. There was too. just enough. That of part that. was really great. When he cuts um, off his arm, and and certainly no more pee drinking. I think I got it. I got the pee the, drinking I, was hilarious. I got that too. You know, he drinks his own pee in this movie. Which and you would and too. They show in it in a way. They show it in a way that's really hilarious. And yeah. If you if if you own a if you own most a if you own visually a, rad way that you could ever watch someone drink their own if, pee. If you own a Camelback, you know you will <laughs> you you'll never look at it the same way again. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but the James Franco, he is. He is everywhere at once. He's on soap operas, too. He's Boy, on, he was. He's on soap operas. He's got an installation at Sundance this year that's about Three's Company, apparently. But what? I mean, a human installation? Like a video installation. It's going to be set up like on Oh, Instagram. a video installation. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's, you know. Well, you're going to Sundance, so yeah. I expect you to a full report, report on the, back on I, that. I will check it out. I am not going to Sundance. I will, I will check it out. Um, so, yeah, is that, are we, anything else about 127 hours? Just that it's great, okay. and everyone should go see it, and especially if you're squeamish, because there's really only about a minute of arm cut offery. Yeah, I, I I only hid my eyes with the with the press notes like once. It would have been, it would have even been a faster arm cutting off scene had he had a proper knife with him. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's like it's all improvised with you know other things, items that were in his backpack. <laughs> I, okay. So, we're also talking this week about uh, Tyler Perry's For Colored Girls. Which sucks. Yeah, basically. Spoiler. Um, it's based on the, um, the 1974 choreo poem by um, playwright Entazaki Shange. What is a choreo poem? I have no idea. It's what she called it. And it's, it's I mean, the, the work is, it's a poetic piece. It's seven women in the play. It's nine in the movie. Correct. And, and they each have these sort of poetic I monologues. actually know what a choreo poem is. And well, tell us then. It's Mr. a Bones. poem that you dance to. That's what that's what that play was. I for colored yes. girls okay. who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. E n u f. Okay. Well, I thought you were going to have something deeper than that. I think we could I guess just, that that's no, what a choreo. Most poem people is. would just go. They would just bleep over that like a Dostoevsky name. They would go, "What's a blah, blah, blah. And It is a to, poem with will, choreography. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Bones, for that's right. elucidating that's on that right. one for us. That's right. So the original play. Um, Did you just make a reference to White Christmas and the minstrel number in White Christmas? No, <laughs> actually, it's an old radio expression that they use in just, Citizen Kane. I'm, I'm, I'm look, trying to, let, I'm go, trying to look, trap you. Look, I'm trying to trap you in a, look, look into the, a racism. Look at the comment. The commentary on Movies. dot com. You're the racist because you don't like Tyler Perry. Every, and this I'm happened. sure I would like him personally if I met him and he took me out for cake <laughs> or a beer this, or something. This happened, no. Or if perhaps I was one of his writers and he paid me a union wage, <laughs> which, that which doesn't happen. Um, 
no, but the but, uh, but no that when I when I was at MSNBC.com and I had to review a couple of Tyler Perry movies, it's like the second that you as a white film critic write a negative review of a Tyler Perry movie because Tyler Perry movies for the or most any part movie, are or terrible. any movie that is African American themed. No, or, but specifically for Tyler Perry, the but Knives specifically for Tyler Perry, I didn't you know when, yeah, I, true, when I didn't true, like true. First Sunday, I did not get the kind of comments I got. <laughs> well, you know when I didn't like First Sunday actually holds the distinction of being worse than most Tyler Perry <laughs> movies. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> less you think, or, or you know. W- w- Woman, thou art loose. Like there whatever. are, yeah. Like there are, there are, there are movies uh, by and for African Americans that. Well, I shouldn't even say they're by or for African Americans. Like by African American directors, writers about that are, African American yeah, subject matter. There are movies out there that are, and believe me, I see everything. And so there are worse things out there than a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah. But when there is a new Tyler Perry movie, that's the worst thing in theaters right at that moment, <laughs> unquestionably. <laughs> So, yeah, and currently the worst thing in theaters is for colored girls, um, which takes this really beautiful play and chops it up and, and, you know, like puts the monologues, either cuts them in half or puts them into the mouths of characters who are supposed to be now having them as a dialogue. So they're basically pontificating poetically to the person stuck across them at a dinner table or standing next to them in a room. So it doesn't flow at all. It doesn't, the context feels bizarre. Now, the good smart thing he does is he goes all close up on the woman speaking. Right. So that the people who are sitting around them are not all just sort of staring at each other. Like, what <laughs> is she? When having, is she going to stop talking? Is she having a dream out <laughs> out loud right now? Like like you don't get their reactions. You don't get to see them going. What is she talking about? Because <laughs> it's like there's there's story 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 story, and then let me tell you about my lilies and moonstones. <laughs> you know, like it it gets incredibly poetic, and it's lovely, but it stops making any kind of narrative yeah. sense. And so I think if you had all those poems together in a row, like they are in, in the, the, in the, the stage original work, stage yeah. production, then it would make an emotional sense. And maybe people think that this movie version will make emotional sense um, if they are, you know, particularly under distanced from it or whatever. Um, but, you know, uh, anyone else? is going to be locked out. And and I think the people who really love the play are also going to be like, what the hell? Locked out. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would say if you live in Los Angeles or New York, um, go to the Paley Center for Media. And in their library, you will find the uh, early 80s American Playhouse version of the play with um, Alfre Woodard, and I forget who else is in it. But it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece. It's very true to the original. And unlike Tyler Perry, they did not feel the need to throw in uh, a woman married to a down-low gay who gives her AIDS. That, well, she, he gives her a cough. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know. That, oh, I forgot about the cough. You, you think this was like She's Betty Davis AIDS. in the 1940s the cough, movie. Yeah. You know you know that Janet Jackson is sick because she coughs throughout the film. It's like, you've got to be kidding me, Tyler Perry. The, um, here's, no, but here's the thing about the gay stuff and Tyler Perry. Um, I, he's, he's evolving. I think he's evolving. And here's why I think, here's my thesis. Man who wear dress protests too much. I think that... You know, he starts off and he's Medea, which is great because Medea's great and she's always waving a gun around and hitting people and stuff, which is hilarious. But then, then he has in Why Did I Get Married 2, which may be one of the greatest cinematic accomplishments of 2010. Why Did I Get Married 2 is a raucous good time if you're in the right mood. And especially the very end, I'm just going to spoil it because I think this spoiler will convince you to watch it. There's, there is finally a gay in Why Did I Get Married 2. There's a gay character. And that gay character has no uh, official character name. name. <laughs> he is a guy who pops out of a cake at the end of the movie. And, well, here's the, I'll set it up a little bit, just briefly. Yes, please. Janet Jackson is in Why Did I Get Married 2. She's, she's a super successful writer. She's getting divorced. She springs a surprise divorce on her husband. She doesn't love him anymore. And he's like, well, I helped you build your career, so I should get part of your you know, income. And she's like, oh, no, you're not getting any of that. And the movie has this whole idea like any man who wants like money from his super rich, successful wife after she's sprung a surprise divorce on him is somehow half a man. <laughs> and so and she, Tyler Perry should know. And, and so well, that, I, I didn't say that. That's not me. I didn't say that part. That was Alonzo. 
Darrell, they sang that part. Um, I'm just saying that's the, you know, when I when I accuse on masculinity, I'm, I turn to well, the, <laughs> I turn to the man who who built a closet for his wife to be, and then decided to fill it with shoes. Fill it with shoes. <laughs> so anyway, so Janet Jackson wheels a big cake into his her ex husband's workplace, and she puts on a boombox, and the song "It's Raining Men" starts. Was it at least the original version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And um. And then this dude jumps out of a cake wearing like a little hot pants and stuff and like a little bikini halter top and a wig. Mm-hmm. And he's just dancing around, writhing around. It's raining men. And Janet Jackson says to her ex-husband, you want to be a bitch? Well, here's your man. <laughs> and so the guy, the ex-husband runs out of the building. This is his workplace, mind you. He jumps out of the, he runs out of the building and he gets in a car and he drives off into oncoming traffic and dies. He has a crash and he dies. So... The gay guy in Why Did I Get Married 2 causes a death. And so there's your first example of gay, official gay. And now we have a gay who makes Janet Jackson cough. Now Now we have a gay who makes Janet Jackson cough. But this gay has lines. And he's on the DL, and he he gives her AIDS. And she says at the end of the movie, she goes, get out of my house and take your lies and your HIV with you. And your HIV with you. Thanks, Tyler Perry, because that's what that's what for colored girls so who consider suicide anonymous really anonymous gay to despicable gay to despicable DL gay. So next movie, there's going to be a for real gay maybe in this movie, with who is not a horrible person that gives AIDS and causes car accidents. What makes you say that? Because he's evolving. I don't think so. The evolution is happening of Tyler Perry. I don't think so. I'm pro. Tyler Perry's evolution on this subject matter. Uh, I will believe Tyler Perry's evolution when I see it. So anyway, the um, uh, there are other good things in For Colored Girls, even though the movie is terrible. And, and generally, uh, anything that works in this movie is because of the source material. And, and the anything, women. The women and then the actresses. The There's a great actresses. And, and anything that Kimberly doesn't work Elise, is, is Tyler people Perry's. Don't, enough people don't know about Kimberly Elise she's and how terrific. great she is. Yes. She's good in like everything that yes. she's in. Um. Uh, who else is great? Felicia Rashad is really nice. Yeah, but movie. again, she gets um, she gets my probably my favorite poem from that play, and oh, yeah. it lops off like after a third of the way in. Right, and um, then uh, 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 Carrie Washington, Carrie Washington is really good. Adore Anika her. Nani Rose is really good in this yes. movie. Yes, and um, I like Loretta Devine in this movie. I, you know, she gets all the and I'm telling you. Yeah, I I, I love do, I love great. I love her. Generally speaking, for me, this was the first movie I ever saw, her, and I thought, wow, this is not a good performance. Just because she yells a lot, it's very yelly. It's she's you know, got a lot to yell about. She's but, upset, but that's all she's got. And it just, it's got, her guy it's got is she, unreliable and is oh, oh, doing yeah. her well, wrong. No, all the men in this movie, it should go with. All the men saying, in this movie are really, are really despicable. rotten. Despicable. <laughs> well, no, no, except for except for Kerry Washington's Kerry Washington's husband, who's a cop and he's nice. Yes, but that's like Dulé Hill. Is that accurate? Uh, I thought that was Hill Harper. Man, Doesn't forget. Hill Harper play her husband? I. One of the hills. I don't remember. Um, How many hills are there? I'd, they're alive with the sound of music. Besides our friend Brian Hill um, in San Diego. I don't know. But anyway, you can you can look it up online. Who plays? That's the only hill I can. Carrie look up Washington's the husband is the one guy in the movie. And and you know the, the they they do. There's a again. This isn't a spoiler because this is from a play that's like almost forty years old. Uh, there is a whole moment that has to do with a deranged man hanging a woman's children out of the window. Um, you can't do that scene with a Jackson in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it, the moment that you have that scene and Janet Jackson is there, it gives it a whole other <laughs> cultural context that is not intended by the playwright or the director, I'm sure. I thought that was a big mistake. And yeah, I, I'm going to stand yeah, by that. I am not, uh, yeah, okay, I agree with you on that. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, but, but so for color girls, you know, go see the play, read the play, do not go see the movie. <laughs> it's not even like I was. I thought it might be like the like the, wacky, bad, and fun to yeah, watch. Yeah, like I thought no, right. that's why did I get married too? Right. You know, why did I get married too? Is like it's like the room and Fatal Attraction <laughs> and and like every like horrible exploitation film you've ever seen, and then people are hitting each other and they're waving guns and knives around and it's this is about relationships <laughs> and so Tyler why Perry did they get married too i really urge everyone to see why did they get married too because <laughs> it's amazing but not in the good and, way no in the totally good way <laughs> the way that's good if you're gonna have a good time you want to be entertained watch why did i get married too fair enough because you will bust a gut over why did i get married too this one there's yeah yeah this is just not it's just it's Dower. 
Yeah, that's a good. Basically, that's a good word for it. Yeah, dour and victimy. So is that is that this is this is our show? Is that, are we good for this week? Uh, how many minutes was that? that we're we, we're coming up on half an hour. Are we really? Yeah. Wow, that it was, zips by. That was it? super quick. Yeah. We're so, amazingly entertaining. We are. I, and, and we're hopefully we're going to get better at this because this is our first one. So uh, if you have um, comments, feedback, uh, you can write us at linoleumpodcast at gmail.com. We have an email? We have an email. What's our email? Say it again. Linoleumpodcast at gmail.com. L-I-N-O-L-E-U-M. Linoleum. Yes. Yeah, that's how you spell it. Linoleumpodcast at gmail.com. Um Check out our friend's podcast, uh, The Comedy Couch, with Dennis Hensley and Tony That's Tripoli. a good one. They're funny, and they lay their lives bare. Indeed. Which is not what we're going to do, no, in spite of the fact that no. we did. We, we admire their honesty, but you're not going to hear it from all us. Just family's housekeeping. Um, and then uh, also the Popcorn Mafia for our good friend Gray Drake. Gray who, Drake, who sold us all of her podcasting equipment. Yes, and made this show possible. And, uh, of course, Blowhard with uh, Malcolm Ingram and sometimes Kevin Smith and sometimes not. And he's a big gay clown. Yes. So um, uh, you can read Dave White's uh, reviews every week at movies.com. But don't write comments because I won't read them. <laughs> And you can um, pick up Slake uh, in lots of places in Los Angeles. You can also get it off of Amazon.com Amazon. and read his terrific story. Uh, and my book, Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas, is in stores now. I will be doing a book tour from coast to coast uh, in, December. in December. So more on that as it comes up. So uh, thanks for listening. Tell your friends. Uh, drop us a line at linoleumpodcast at gmail.com. And we will see you next week. Later. <laughs>